Hey Amstrad fans, this is a long plane review for Sub Hunter, which is a brand new homebrew release for the Amstrad CPC, and uh, it was actually early this year, February, when this came out. Now I'm going to shut up just for a few minutes and let you watch the fantastic and awesome uh, intro sequence. So enjoy, and I'll chime back in in a couple of minutes' time. All right, here we go. guys that's uh, one of the uh, best uh, intros to an Amstrad game I've uh, I've ever seen and of course there you can see all the you've seen all the uh, credits of the game and there's there uh, and the and the story and here comes the instructions and basically uh, the aim of the game over 24 25 levels is to rescue uh, swimmers who are stupidly swimming in uh, oceans that are full of mutant sea creatures and there's a really good variety in levels actually as well which we'll, uh, we'll see shortly bonus levels as well Now, from what I can find out, uh, this is a basically a conversion of a uh, C64 game. Itself a conversion of a C16 game, Commodore 16, uh, released many many years ago officially, and then uh, fairly recently, um, uh, Frank Gasking and Richard Bayliss decided to do a Commodore 64 version of the game, which is a uh, uh, massively improved from the original on the C16 with lots of different new things and basically this uh, this is also, this is basically uh, a version of that C64 version They're both independently uh, you know produced games programmer Paul Kuistra of this uh, Amstrad version he's added in lots of little extra little things as well I've not actually seen the uh, full uh, Commodore 64 version in action just have seen a few screenshots and a few uh, short gameplay videos looks pretty similar plays pretty similar so I'm not quite sure what the uh, extras were perhaps the uh, cool intro sequence maybe Even so, this is a really cool title screen. I love that the uh, the ripple effects of under the uh, Sub Hunter logo there. Very cool. Already, uh, you can 
tell this is a really classy product. And so much effort put into the little details as well. Now Paul Kuistra, he uh, um, appeared on the amateur scene quite, only quite recently, as probably as uh, late as 2007, and produced the absolutely brilliant sort of R-Type clone uh, Star Saber. Uh, you can find a gameplay video of that in my channel, but I'll be doing the uh, full uh, playthrough and review of the 128K version, which is slightly upgraded, and that was a fantastic shoot em up. And then uh, in 2010 he released Star Saber, as a brilliant another another brilliant space based shoot 'em up, which which has a very unique um, gameplay and, and point scoring system. Rather shamefully, I don't have a video of that in my channel, but I promise I will get around to that. But anyway, you can hear this music in full uh, later on after the, at the at the end of the game. But we're going to get this started up, and here's the uh, first level. Level 1 and we're rescuing swimmers. And there we go, we're controlling that little submarine there. And just look at those fantastic graphics guys. Just the Amstrad co uh, uh, colour palette has been really used fantastically in the game. There's parallax scrolling. That's crazy, I've never seen so much parallax scrolling in an Amstrad game before. Wow, and uh, yeah, quite quickly completed that level there, we're on to level 2. Uh, already a different gameplay type, this time we're bombing the fish. Basically we've got about a set amount of time, about 30 seconds, to uh, clear out a set number of fish, mutant fish, and um, for our uh, swimmer to swim through, so we're clearing a path for him. Three more fish to go. There's our little swimmer, yay! Now there's 24 levels in this game guys, um, the 25th level is a, is a final boss battle, you'll have to wait and see. Right, level 3. Another different type of gameplay, this time we've got to navigate to the bottom of the ocean to pick up uh, swimmers who have uh, fallen to the bottom of the sea there, onto the seabed. Look at him waving there. Help me! Rescue me! Uh. This uh, this gameplay yeah, the, of this level that gets quite uh, gets really difficult later on, and basically your sub is always descending, always dropping down, so uh, it's not as easy as it looks. So you can't move back up until you picked up the swimmer. So you've got to be really careful. Difficulty curve, and this is really good actually. It's not hard to pick up and get you into the game. As you can see, we're already on to level 4, and uh, this is. Ah, uh, save the swimmers again, like the first level, but with evil wibbly wobbly things. Whee. And again, we've got different colours and stuff on the go there. It's nice how the uh, colour scheme changes as well throughout the levels. Now, this music is absolutely fantastic. Now, they've opted not to use sound effects in the game because using sound effects will just consume one of the uh, free available audio channels. So, uh, I think it's better to have that full, awesome music always on the go there. And we're already on to a bonus round. And basically we've got to navigate a minefield here. And if we pick up all the um, diamonds or uh, jewels, there, there's one on this level, we get a bonus life. And if we've got a full complement of lives, then I think we just basically get a, a massive uh, bonus score. You can only have four lives maximum, so you can't uh, build them up. Which makes the game a lot, tr uh, lot trickier. Oh, that was a difficult one to get there. And, uh, right. And as you can see, it gets faster and faster. We don't lose a life if we uh, hit a mine on this level. This is purely a bonus round. Oh, that was very, very close there, but we got through. 
and uh, we're back to the on the level six. So it's back to uh, rescuing the swimmers. This time with octopuses and uh, added seahorses. I think the seahorses take a couple of uh, hits to destroy. And of course, uh, your submarine there can fire torpedoes out. But I choose to be really careful with my torpedoes because you can often end up killing the swimmers you need to rescue. I really to progress in this game is to be very very quick and get as much swimmers as you can as early on as possible. Um, the longer you sort of stay on a level, the more likely you're going to get uh, squished by an evil mutant fish. So same again on this level, but this time we've got submarines and uh, I think they're mines as well. Oh dear, of course, if uh, one of the uh, sea creatures or submarines gets to the swimmer before I do, and then they get, um, then they're killed. And there's a set amount of swimmers you need to save per level. Obviously, you can see there I've got five swimmers to save. That's the fifth swimmer. There we go. So you can get into quite a few of the first few levels quite quickly and progress quite well. But trust me, in a, in a couple of levels' time, it gets really insanely difficult. Quite a tough game to beat. So yeah, we're bombing the submarines and fish again. Clearing a path for our swimmer. This time we've got two swimmers to get through. And time limit gets a little bit uh, tighter. There's a first swimmer. Tell you what, 
on these levels, especially in these shaft attack levels, my, my heart rate is pump, pounding away. This level especially takes a huge amount of concentration, as do most of the levels actually to be fair. This is just simply a superb game. Gameplay is really simple, but there's really nice variety in it, and it's such a quick pick up and play game. You know, you can just jump straight in. You don't need to worry about reading the instructions too much. And if you just fancy a quick blast, you know, this is a game you can pick up and just get straight into. And this is what games should be like, you know, in uh, 2011 and onwards. You know, if people are going to write and produce new games, apart from massive epics like uh, Orion Prime, you know, another fantastic release on the Amstrad CPC, which is a really in-depth um, arcade uh, adventure. Aside from those type of games, if they're really done really epically and, and you know, really in-depth, then really why I want to be playing in 2011 is really simple, fast action games like this, Star Saber, Dead on Time, that all of which Paul Kuistra has produced for the Amstrad and uh, I'm eternally grateful for. Really, I couldn't ask for anything better. And no offence to other guys, you know, writing games uh, for the Amstrad and other 8-bit machines, but uh, I think Paul Kuistra has really hit the nail on the head on, on what people want. And guys, if you're an Amstrad fan, retro gamer or whatever, you can get this game free to download, and there's really no excuse if you haven't already, shame on you if you haven't, <laughs> Zypho is telling you I'm ashamed of you if you haven't, support the scene and all that bollocks, you know, there's really only a few games a year that get released these days, and uh, you know, when you've got a game of this quality, it's a crying shame and criminal that, uh, you know, you don't take the time of day to download and have a play of it, and let you know the thought. Let let Paul know your thoughts on the forums and stuff like that, and help promote these games. And of course, you know you can actually buy this game from the uh, Cytronic website. I'll provide a link uh, in the description. You could buy this on tape and disc, and the packaging is absolutely fantastic, guys. It's like you bought a game back in 1988 or whatever comes in a proper case, uh, with inlay, instructions, and uh, I mean absolutely massive props to Ken's who runs Cytronic, I mean when I got the game uh, in the post I was absolutely blown away by the packaging, I mean uh, the case had bubble wrapping around it, the disc had bubble wrapping inside the case, it looked absolutely first rate, um, so you know 10 out of 10 for that. Another big thank you to Ken's as well. I had problems with the uh, first disc that um, was sent out. It turns out it's probably in my disk drive on my uh, 6128 Plus at home. But without even you know prompting, uh, Ken sent me out a replacement disc, free of charge. It was in the post and arrived. And uh, you know I'm eternally grateful. I mean that's that's that is absolutely fantastic customer service. And it's so great to be playing uh, a game released in 2011 on a real CPC with uh, proper box art and you know instructions and you know inlay and stuff. It, fantastic. Ah, okay. A little tip on this uh, level: you're temporarily invulnerable at the start, so uh, I like to descend to the bottom as quickly as possible and get that first uh, swimmer rescued. And uh, this. Wow, this is getting really, really tough now because I'm moving really, really, really quickly and uh, uh, there's no room for error on this. So uh, you, I like to develop a bit of a zigzag pattern there. And there's a slightly larger gap um, after two uh, enemies there, so make note of that as well. There you go, exploiting that uh, just extra gap there. Ooh, it's going to be a tight one. I mean, 
this game really rewards um, your, your, your skill on the joystick here. I mean, the controls are so responsive and tight. Um, I can't can't fault the controls, and uh, you know you need to have extremely quick reflexes. And thankfully, I mean, there's an absolutely zero lag on this game. You know, having any kind of lag on the controls would have been an absolute killer. But yeah, I mean, let, let's just talk about this uh, parallax scrolling again. I mean, uh, I've never seen so many layers of parallax in a in an Amstrad game before in my life. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic, and it moves so smoothly. That's one of the smoothest scrolls I've seen on the Amstrad. I think the Commodore 64 version just scrolls just a touch uh, smoother, perhaps at a slightly higher frame rate. But hey, you know. Um, Commodore 64 came armed with uh, hardware scrolling and excelled in sort of uh, horizontal scrolling games like this. And it's really, really difficult to achieve on the Amstrad, let alone having multiple layers of parallax scrolling. So, you know, Mr. Kuistra, Paul, uh, wow, um, I'm absolutely amazed. I mean, if you've come, if you, if you're a, you know, a, not a retro gamer, you're, a, you know, you're of the Xbox generation or whatever, and you come to view this game, you might wonder what all the fuss is about. But uh, you know, this is a computer released in 1984, with uh, you know, a pitiful amount of uh, processing and memory power available to it, and no hardware support really for scrolling and sprites and stuff like that. And yeah, of course, yeah, the sprites. Look how smoothly they move around the game. Uh, you know, around the screen. Absolutely first rate. I mean, uh, as you can tell, guys, I'm going to give this game a really high score. I think this is heading towards my first uh, 10 out of 10. I mean, really, how could I give it any less? I'm re really, I'm not sure what else could be added to the game. Especially in the uh, available memory, and this works. I think this works just as well uh, in 40, uh, you know, 64k of memory. So you can use this on the 464, the 6128, the Plus machines. I mean, uh, obviously, it's not using any sort of Plus features, and it doesn't need to. It's fantastic already as it is. And I mean that that intro sequence as well. I mean that's one of the best intros I've seen on any 8-bit uh, game ever. This is some of the best music I've also seen. I mean uh, I'm going over stuff again, really. So yeah, guys, make sure you go and get this game, and also check out the other releases. Um, Star Saber. Uh, dead on time. You can also actually uh, buy them from the Cytronic website as well. So make sure uh, you go and do that as well. Anyway, I'll stop. I'll, I'll stop lecturing you on uh, supporting the scene and all that rubbish. So uh, right, where are we now? We're on to uh, level 20. Not far to go. Thankfully, a little bit of an easier level, a bit of a respite from uh, the craziness that. Came before. Although those uh, octopuses are evil, but quickly save those uh, swimmers as quickly as you can. You don't want to stick around too long on these levels. Same again, but this time with subs and mines. Oh, just missed that uh, swimmer there. Not as hard as that level 10 though. Yay! Uh, I think we're on to the final uh, Bomb the Fish mission. Yeah, that's right. Started off with 35 seconds um, to do this in. I think it gets less and less to the time limit you're given. We've got 
three uh, uh, swimmers to save this time. There's the first one done. Yeah, 35 seconds. Uh, I think there's more uh, fish or submarines to kill as this, uh, this this type of mission progresses. They also move a little bit faster. And uh, what else to mention? Wow, there you go. That's the second swimmer saved. Well, I need only two more levels to go to the final boss confrontation, uh, which, trust me, guys, is pretty impressive stuff as well. Cool, one more last one to go. So, I guess, guys, I think I'll sum up my review now. Uh, I mean, uh, you already know, I'm going to give this 10 out of 10. Just a bit of a crazy score, you know, perfect. Um, well, I suppose if I was doing percentages and stuff, it wouldn't get 100%, but it would be uh, definitely 95% plus. I mean, uh, graphics, absolutely first rate. Music, absolutely uh, first rate as well. Um, and some really impressive techniques used, like the multi-layered parallax scrolling. I mean, I've never seen that before. Achieve, or at least achieved as well as that in an actual game on the Amstrad. Uh, Gameplay is interested, uh, interesting and varied, uh, you know, change between levels. It's got a really uh, good pick up and play quality about it if you, if you fancy a quick blast or uh, determined to beat the game. I mean, the difficulty curve is spot on, I mean, it gets uh, really mental on level 10 onwards, but, uh, and I'm very lucky to have done this run without uh, losing a life. Um, but controls nice, smooth, and responsive, as, as is the sprite movement around the screen. <sighs> yeah, 10 out of 10, guys, 10 out of 10. And this is on the last levels now, the final uh, shark attack. Survive the shark attack. And for me, this is probably the uh, hardest uh, type of level in the game. Very close. Okay, right. Ooh. So yeah, anyway, right, we're coming on to the final boss battle, which is a mega shark. It's the mother mutant shark and uh She's a real swine. We've got our 15 seconds left here to survive. And uh, boy, this has been hard work. I mean, you'll probably eventually complete this as well, guys, but um, it's taken me a long, long, long time to do. I mean, this has been out since February. And uh, here we go, right, on to the uh, final battle. Mega Shark versus Submarine. And getting quick and get lots of hits on there. Remember, you're temporarily invulnerable at the start of the level. So, as you can see, there's a boss uh, hit count and uh, energy level at the bottom uh, right there. As you get more uh, attacks on her, she changes colour. And the little baby shark she fires out at you get faster and faster. I'll start taking my time here a little bit more. Of course, you can hold down the fire button as well to basically uh, have auto fire. Constantly fires uh, torpedoes out. You only fire one at a time though. So the closer you are to your target, the more you can get off. Not the hardest boss encounter ever, but uh, certainly tricky, and uh, quite an impressive large sprite there, and yay, we've done it! Hurrah! And time for the final end screen. guys that's a really love end uh, end screen there and more music
music, more fantastic music. Sadly, not as good as the uh, intro sequence. There isn't some kind of uh, animated uh, big end uh, sequence, which is a, a little shame. But you know, geez, you can't complain too much. I mean, uh, the quality in this game uh, and attention to detail, uh, you know, spot on. It's perfect. And this is one of the best games uh, I've played on the Amstrad. Maybe some of you might not enjoy it as much as I have, but uh, I really truly did. And I'm really, really appreciative for anyone uh, in this day and age producing uh, new Amstrad games. Even if they're not up to this quality, I mean, uh, there's very little, you know, financial uh, benefit. I mean, uh, obviously, you can go and buy this game. I'm sure maybe only a few hundred people have purchased this or whatever, you know. So the guy's not going to be, uh, you know, Ken's and Paul and stuff. I'm not going to be millionaires from, uh, from releasing Amstrad games, and uh, no one would be. But they've really, he's really truly gone the extra mile in presentation on this, and it's uh, something to be really, really proud of. So well done, 10 out of 10 from me. I'm going to let this uh, just run on. Um, and let you enjoy this uh, end game music. Uh, and also so, uh, the title, uh, title screen music in full. And then I'll just start up and just show you the uh, game over sequence, which is just a nice little jingle and stuff. But thanks for watching guys, and like I said, go download, go buy this game, tell all your friends about it, spread the word, and keep the uh, homebrew and Amstrad scene alive. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and see you again sometime soon. Cheers, bye.